There is no reason why poverty should be here. This is a rich country, 120 million energetic, hardworking, intelligent people. Uh, they can change the world, not just one tiny country. Muhammad Yunus is an economics professor, a man trained in reason and rationale. Yet he believes the seemingly unbelievable, that poverty is a solvable problem. Human being has been created on this planet to live with dignity. And uh, they can do that with the resources that is all around us. Dhaka is the capital of Bangladesh, a city of 8 million people where the pollution burns your nose and throat and rush hour lasts all day. Every bit of space is accounted for as villagers clog the streets in search of work and a better life. Few find it. Many country folk wind up in the slums. This one we were allowed to film. It's the largest, but by no means the worst. For years, Bangladesh has been portrayed only as the world's basket case. But according to Yunus, it's not the people who failed to improve their lot, it's the system, one which rejects the poor. So I tried to solve this by giving money from my own pocket. Then I saw how much uh, excitement it brought to them. So I thought I should let it continue. So I went to the bank to persuade them to lend money, and they said no. That's where my story begins. Eunice's story is the story of the Grameen Bank, literally the village bank. You won't see any grand buildings though, for Grameen is built not on a mountain of money, but on the hard work and determination of the rural poor, the bank's borrowers and its owners. Fourteen years after Eunice's dream swung into motion, more than two million Bangladeshis have been able to start their own businesses, with loans as small as just one dollar. Uchitpura Arayajar, two hours' drive northeast of the capital, is one of the 35,000 villages in which Grameen operates. The constant clack of weaving looms is the area's heartbeat, pumping out the fine fabrics for which Bengalis have long been renowned. Puribanu is typical of many of the women who come to Grameen. Since her husband died 14 years ago, hers has been a life of continual hardship. She earns 250 tucker a week, not even $8, spooling yarn for someone else. The assets her husband once owned, land and cows, have all been sold in order to clothe and feed her three children.
This is the man who need to approve Puribanu's loan, Shah Jahan, one of Grameen's 7,000 roving bankers. Each day, it's estimated, bank employees cycle, walk or paddle a combined distance equivalent to one and a half times around the earth, all in the name of collecting borrowers' weekly repayments. There are many things about Grameen which are not conventional. Chanting slogans is just one of them. Unlike other banks, you don't need collateral to secure a loan. In fact, only those without assets may apply. All potential borrowers, like Purabanu, must form a group with four other people, all of whom are responsible for each other's debts should anyone default. Thanks to peer group support and pressure, however, few do. Grameen claims a repayment rate of 98%. One of the bank's success stories is Porobanu's neighbour, Aisha. But Grameen won out over the gossipers. After eight years of saving and reinvestment, Aisha is the proud owner of $4,000 worth of weaving looms. She believes the Grameen Bank saved her life, and now she's fighting for Puribanu to have the same chance of salvation. <laughs> For Eunice, Grameen is not just about raising women's capital, it's about raising their self-respect and standing in a society where women are expected to defer to men. That philosophy has paid off. Women have turned out to be much better credit risks than men. Today, Grameen actively seeks female borrowers, who comprise 94% of all clients. Children get uh, immediate benefit if the mother is a borrower, and women will have a longer vision about life and building up things so that they can move out of poverty, uh, whereas men didn't pay much attention to the children as much as mother did. Uh, they are not as worried about future, uh, they are more uh, trying to enjoy uh, right now. But there are those who believe that solving world poverty is not as simple as loaning money to the poor that it must also tackle the bigger picture. It is essential in the initial stage to try to build up the macro-level institutions, the road structure, the banking system, the telecommunication system, the protection of the agriculture you know, by building embankments, drainage, irrigation facilities. You know, you can't uh, say that, well, these are big things uh, we should give credit to the uh, small farmer that will change the fortune of the, of the farmer. No. We have received something like $30 billion in foreign aid since we became independent 25 years back. Uh, but if you go around, you don't see the mark of these $30 billion in the faces of the people. Uh, this is uh, nothing to say against the people. This is something to say against uh, foreign aid, the way it has been used. Uh, those foreign aid went perhaps uh, in building infrastructures. 
uh, building highways, building uh, power plants or building whatever, uh, but not concerned with the life of the people. If Professor Yunus, whom I respect very much, the president of the Grameen Bank, uh, suggested that it was a wrong policy to support the big infrastructure projects, well, I politely beg to disagree. I think well, uh, these uh, this large infrastructure projects why are important, are important and have to be developed. For Puribanu, however, this is as big as the picture gets. She's on her way to Grameen's regional office to collect her loan. Thanks to Aisha steamrolling the village opposition, Puribanu has been given a chance. Grameen lends money at 20% interest. While better than the exorbitant rates charged by moneylenders, it's still not cheap. Taking a loan, then, is a huge step for these women. Even in times of natural disaster, Grameen doesn't forgive debt, the bank only restructures it. Nevertheless, Porubanu is keen to sign on the dotted line. She writes her name in pen for the very first time. For the past week, she's been practising with a stick in the dirt. For all her understandable trepidation, Porubanu is confident she'll be able to turn her 4,000 taka, or $100 loan, into a profitable business, buying and reselling fabric. Now, Grameen Bank is described as a bank of the poor. And it hurts me uh, to keep on hearing this for the last 20 years. Because uh, and I, my dream is to uh, keep hearing a new kind of description that uh, uh, so Grameen is a bank of the former poor. The people who entered Grameen are no longer poor. So they are the ones who uh, now continue within Grameen Bank. So a poverty-free Grameen Bank and then extend it to Bangladesh, a poverty-free Bangladesh. There's a nobody in Bangladesh who can be described as a poor person. Is that a realistic vision? It's very realistic indeed. It, uh, not only within the context of Bangladesh, I think it's realistic in a global context. Uh, we can create a poverty-free world where nobody will ever become, will become a poor person. Will there ever be the political will to do that though? It's up to you and me. Political will is my will and your will together. If we believe in it, that's the way we'll have it. See, anything before it can happen, we have to start dreaming about it. Unless we dream about it, we'll never have it. Today, Poribanu can dare to dream and begin to make it happen. Instead of a future of destitution, Porubanu can look forward to her own business, employment for her son and schooling for her daughter. Grameen might not as yet be changing the whole world, but it's certainly changing hers. <laughs>